Okay, so now we're going to actually move away from space requirements and we're going to start talking about developing alternative layouts. Now there's a lot of different ways to develop it. Um, you can just sort of trial and error and put it together. But one of the sort of common methods that are used, and this book uses it a lot, and actually it's, I've, used, I've seen it used in other areas, is called systematic layout planning for in order to develop alternatives. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about this particular method and, and um, the way you should probably use it in the way that I've seen it used before is to have different, each of you independently generate a layout and then once you generate several different layouts you can kind of evaluate them and talk about them and maybe come up with some sort of hybrid layout. So let's go through the systematic approach um, and this is called systematic layout planning, SLP. This is a full evaluation, a full uh, description of it. And so it's not just generating the alternative layouts, but it actually incorporates several steps of the process. The analysis, if you think about DAMES, the make search alternative, and the evaluation. So this kind of looks at all three of those. So the first thing we do is we take input data. And that would be things like your um, interviews, drawings, parts lists, route sheets, all those things we talked about several videos ago having to do with, you know, how do you collect data and how do you understand the current operations. Once you get all that information, then you actually do sort of two different things. One is you look at the activities that are going on within the de different departments, and you um, also evaluate the flow of materials. So the flow of materials is a very big deal having to do with the relationship diagram, but you also, there there's some things that don't just have flow of materials, like there's flow of information, and so that's why you also need to look at the relationship between activities. After you do that, you generate a relationship diagram, and we talked about this before as a way of um, sort of qualitatively explaining the relationships between the departments. So this is a look at it. Um, this was actually done for um, slow roasted coffee when we did a facilities design for them. So you can see the departments that are listed there, roasting, canning, degassing, GB storage, I'm not sure what that is, grinding, flavoring, labeling, can storage, fin finished goods storage, and shipping. Those are the departments that were defined and the relationships then were laid out this way. So you can see the, lo the strongest relationships are indicated with an A and that it would be roasting and degassing and canning and degassing. So from that they were able to um, place those particular ones with A relationships closer to each other when they did the layout. So then once you have that relationship diagram, then you look at space requirements. And again, we've been spending several videos looking at how do you determine how much space is required? How, how do you plan for space? And what are all the things you need to think about when it has to do with space? You also need to take into account the space available. Now, if you have a sort of a blank slate to create a facility, you might not have space available, but that's actually pretty unusual because usually people have in mind how big they want it to be at least and often there are some space limitations. So from there then you look at well what are each of the departments and how much space is required in each department. So you'll have actually a list of the square footage required for each department and you, you should have built this up from the workstation area to the number of workstations including aisles and including all other kinds of support equipment, support areas. So this is a list for slow roasted coffee of the various square footage is required for each of the departments. So now then you move to um, a space relationship diagram. In that case you actually put all of the departments out and you you just have relative size of those departments. So if we remember back at this thing the roasting was a thousand square feet so that is bigger than the grinding which was um, 800 square feet. So the the relative size of the um, departments are indicated. In addition, the lines between them indicate the strength of the relationship. So the very thickest line here between grinding and roasting is actually an A relationship. The one between roasting and flavoring is an E relationship. The others probably are I relationships and probably O's are not included at all. Um, O's and U's are not included. But this lets you know that what, you're, what you want to try to do here is minimize those distances that are the thickest. So from that, then you look at modifying considerations. Maybe there's columns you need to think about. Maybe there's shipping and receiving doors you might need to think about. Maybe the, um, the management has particular um, issues they need to think about. The shape of the building. There could be individual desires. Like when we worked for... Um, what was that, Ernie Ball, the owner of the facility wanted a much bigger office than we gave him. And so he need, we needed to adjust that because he was the owner. So we needed to adjust that in, in the final design.
So from that then you start developing alternative layouts. In this case it would be you take the block diagram where you squish them all together and you make um, a particular layout which you can't really see there that's weird but um, that would be the layout of the actual facility would, which would be what you actually create and then you move into evaluations which we're going to talk about um, at, during the next video but that is the whole process of systematic layout planning from the input data all the way down into the evaluation.